Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sale box for the 12th of July 2013. My name is Total Biscuit, rounding up your daily Steam deals. These deals will last for 48 hours from today, so you do have up until the 14th of July at 1 p.m. Eastern Time to actually pick these up. If you missed yesterday's deals, then I suggest you go and watch yesterday's sale box. You still have a little bit of time to grab them. So let's kick it off, shall we, with the first deal, which is Chivalry. 75% off, that's $6.24, €5.74 in Tier 1, four forty-nine in Tier 2, and £4.74. FYI, if I don't tell you the Australian price, that's because it's the same as the US price. This is not always the case, but it is on the majority of these titles. There'll be a few where you guys get screwed over. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Anyway, Chivalry, 75% off is probably... I. Th yeah, I'm pretty sure that is the biggest discount we've seen thus far. Usually it's about 66, so this is a good time to pick it up, as good a time as any, really. It's a first-person melee combat game. It is multiplayer only. And uh, I have played numerous games of this. Indeed, we even did a TGS Battle Royale on the subject. So there's a metric ton of content on this particular matter. I even did a video comparing it to War of the Roses. It is a very enjoyable game indeed, with an excellent weighty melee system. And I would strongly recommend it. Surgeon Simulator, 66% off, taking it down to $3.39, $3.39 and £2.37. Now, if I'm totally honest, when I see games like Surgeon Simulator and stuff like Soda Drink Pro and even, to some degree, Viscera, at least in its current state, I look at a game that's very much a toy more so than anything else. I mean, this is a game that was based on a 48-hour prototype. Bear that in mind. It does have some interesting ideas behind it, but does that make it a good game? Not as far as I'm concerned. I think that a lot of people bought into the gimmick after watching Let's Plays of it, and the fact that there are now TF2 characters in the game, but as an actual game itself, no, it's not that fun. That said, it is a $3 toy, so maybe you might find some enjoyment with it regardless. It's hard to really sit down and critique a game for 25 minutes that costs less than your average Subway sandwich. Call of Duty Black Ops 2, 50% off, taking it down to $30 at 30 euros at 20 pounds and $44.99 in Australia. Enjoy that, Aussies. Yes, indeed. Good price for Black Ops as far as I'm concerned. And I would like to say that, honestly, I think Black Ops 2 is one of the better Call of Duty titles. If you're going to play any of them, this is as good a one as any to grab because they have absolutely no sense whatsoever. They decided they would not discount any of the map packs at all. So yeah, enjoy getting ripped off there. But it does have a reasonable single player campaign, some fairly enjoyable weapons and abilities, and of course the solid multiplayer mode. The PC port is solid, probably one of the better ones. I mean, certainly much better than the recent Modern Warfare titles, that I can guarantee. There's little more that really needs to be said on the subject of Call of Duty. I think everybody knows it inside out at this stage, but I have to applaud Treyarch for actually at least deviating a little bit, just a little bit, from that well-trodden path with Black Ops 2, making things a little bit more interesting. Let's see if Mocap Dog can redeem the franchise this November. Darksiders 2, 80% off, takes it down to $10, 10 euros or seven pounds. This is the cheapest the game has been outside of the Humble Bundle, which, of course, went down a long time ago, and there's really no other way to get it now. The last and cheapest price that I've seen for it, I think, was $12.49, so seeing it for $10 or your regional equivalent is fairly rare, to say the least. It also discounts the DLC. Worth grabbing the Season Pass, that's probably the best bet there, since it gives you all the DLC for $4 or your regional equivalent. That's always nice. The rest of the stuff is like weapons and things like that. You don't need them. You, there are so many weapon pickups in this game, I would personally avoid grabbing that stuff. It's a really good game, and I should also point out that the original, which is arguably a better game, is also on sale for 80% off for $4, not too shabby at all. Darksiders 2 is a little bit more God of War-esque, whereas the original Darksiders was a little bit more Zelda-esque. It's probably the best way to describe it. Darksiders 2's combat system is more advanced. It also has a loot system within it, a little bit Diablo-esque. But aside from that, it plays in a reasonably similar way to the original Darksiders. I would suggest picking them up if you are a fan of the God of War style of doing things which is third of the game being combat, 
third of the game being platforming, third of the game being puzzles. That's exactly what Darksiders 2 is, and it does a fine job. It's got great graphical design, it's a ton of fun, the combat system is really good, but personally, I got a little bit annoyed having to deal with the puzzles and the platforming, which was taking away from the enjoyable nature of the combat. But, really comes down to what you personally like. FTL faster than light, 75% off, taking it down to $2.49, €2.49, or £1.74. For this price, there is no question that I would recommend this title. The reason I would do so is because it is a very enjoyable spaceship simulator, whereby you must manage your spaceship as you take it through various dangers. I would say that it's randomly generated, but it does come from a pool of events. But each play through the game is generated on its own, so you will have a different experience to some degree every time. The modding scene for this game is also growing, which is great. There are numerous enjoyable mods available for when you've actually finished the main campaign. There is an element of randomness in the game which may annoy some people. It, there is the potential that you'll run into something which will pretty much kill you, or you'll go through the game without getting the weapons and the upgrades that you actually need, but for me, it's a great experience that can be finished if you're efficient in about an hour and has a lot of replayability, so I would strongly recommend FTL without question. The Walking Dead, 75% off, taking it down to $6.24, €6.24 and £5.24. The Walking Dead is essentially an adventure game that's based on the graphic novels. The actual interaction in the game consists mostly of point-and-click style with occasional QTE-style events and a lot of conversations and decision-making. The dialogue is the strength of this game, and the character development is very strong indeed. The game is almost a visual novel, almost, and it plays very well indeed. Unfortunately, the DLC, which just came out a few days ago, does not, in fact, have a discount on it, which is kind of to be expected, but there you go. And I'd say if you're looking for something story-driven, something very much character-driven, and you're willing to deal with gameplay that pretty much consists of walking around, occasionally shooting a zombie in some kind of QTE event, as well as conversation trees and point-and-click style gameplay, then you will enjoy The Walking Dead immensely. If you're looking for something a little bit higher on the action, however, this is not the title for you. Anno 2070, 50% off, taking it down to $15, 15 euros, and 10 pounds. Australian price is $17.46 for some reason. This is actually a great title, and I would have recommended it when it first came out, but it was laden down with horrible DRM. Thankfully, that's no longer the case. The DRM has, for the most part, been removed, so you don't have to deal with too much more of Ubisoft's nonsense. The game itself is, for the most part, an economic simulator. It's set in the future, it is part of the Anno series, and as a result, it involves colony development, trading, and economic prowess. It does have some nice features, including different factions vying for your allegiance, as well as missions that are given to you via this overall world map and kind of situation room. It's pretty cool, very cool in fact, and it is definitely one of the better economic strategy games that are currently available. As for the DLC, some stuff you can avoid. The best DLC in there is clearly Deep Ocean, which is the actual expansion pack for it. For the most part, though, the rest of it is so ridiculously cheap that you might as well pick the whole thing up anyway. The Complete Edition will save you a little bit of money, a few dollars. However, do not be misled by the DLC Complete Pack that looks like a really good way of buying all the DLC because that does not include Deep Ocean, which is the thing you actually need because that's the thing that has the real content in it aside from the little bits and pieces pieces that come with the small DLC, which for the most part were pre-order or special edition bonuses. It's a really good game though. Very good indeed. It was mostly overlooked, I feel, but I've also got to say that was Ubisoft's fault with the nonsense that they put in place with the DRM upon launch of this game. Sniper Ghost Warrior 2, that is 85% off, a very deep discount on this one, taking it down to $4.49, 5 euros 99 tier 1, 4.49 tier 2, and 3.74 in the UK. Very deep discount indeed, to the point where I'd almost say it actually might be worthy of your time. It is by far not the best sniper game. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, it isn't. I would love to say that it is, but it's not. It is, however, a more modern take on stuff that previously has only really existed in the World War II genre. 
I'd recommend if you want to get into this game only really playing it on the higher difficulties because the lower difficulties just hold your hand the entire way, which is kind of annoying. But that's not to say that this is a particularly good game. It's very middle of the road, very mediocre. It has its moments, but it does have some issues. The multiplayer basically sucks, and it does have some rather nastily spaced checkpoints. So please do bear that in mind. For the price, it's acceptable for those desperately looking for a sniping experience. But what I would say is if this were full price, I would be avoiding it like the plague. So take that as you will. Fez, 50% off, taking it down to $5, 5 euros and £3.49. Fez is a puzzle platformer. The PC port of this title is not that great. It has a few issues, including locking the game natively to 720p. If you're using a widescreen monitor like, a, say, a 16x10 monitor, you're going to be horribly letterboxed, which is very annoying indeed. The options menu is essentially non-existent, and it is recommended that you play this game with a gamepad. The game itself was widely acclaimed for actually being a very clever title. If you were to break it down mechanically, it would be about a character that can twist his 2D world around in a 3D fashion. Interesting, to say the least. It's got a lot of controversy surrounding it regarding its developer, who has said numerous things about PC, including the idea that they're only for spreadsheets, but he did eventually bring the title to PC. It just took him a long time to actually do it. It's one of those intellectual puzzle platformers on the level of Braid, so if you dislike that kind of thing, then Fez is probably not going to be convincing you otherwise. And my deal of the day, I think it's going to go to Just Cause 2, 80% off $3, 3 euros or £1.99. Good lord, that is a fantastic price for a great title. I don't know how many people actually don't own this game yet. There is the possibility that everyone now does, but I think Just Cause 2 for that price is absolutely without question something you should be looking into. It's an incredibly fun open world game, a chaos simulator. You can do all sorts of great things with it. The modding scene is very strong as well, and there is even work on a big co-op multiplayer mod for the game, which is impressive to say the least. You can do all sorts of nonsensical things. It's essentially one gigantic action movie cranked all the way up to 11. It's consistently hilarious, it looks amazing, and it's got a fantastically realized and massive world. So yeah. Please do buy that. If you haven't played Just Cause 2 yet, you need to play Just Cause 2. Come on, just get on with it. It also happens to have a very good PC port, although we should bear in mind that considering the graphical fidelity of this game is rather high, it may require reasonably high system requirements even though the game is several years old. A warning to those of you who still use Windows XP, the game does not run on DirectX 9 systems. You need Vista or Windows 7 or Windows 8 to actually operate this game. The DLC is also worth getting and get the whole lot for like $1.73, adds a bunch of new weapons and vehicles, why the hell not? All over that phenomenal game. All right, folks, that does me for the day. Thank you very much for watching the sale box. Please remember that if you missed yesterday's deal assessment, then the video is up on the channel. I'll be back around the same time tomorrow with yet more daily Steam deals. We'll see you next time.